Okay, welcome back. So this is the second half of our lecture on decision and regression trees. And in this portion of lecture, I'm gonna do something I've never done before, but I think it will be important for you guys to see. Um, I looked around for a problem that I'd never done before myself. And I wanna show you how the process goes. <laughs> like if I'm going to perform a, a machine learning task on a given data set that I've never worked with before. Um, I'm not familiar with like the loading utilities for like the data set. Um, I don't even really do um, regression tree machine learning a lot myself, right? So we're gonna go through this process together and you're gonna like see what it looks like to like just try something, right? So, okay, with that being said, we're gonna try to implement a regression tree on a data set. The problem that I found comes from this California housing data set, which is on SkyKitLearn. It's actually the uh, data set used at the beginning of this textbook. Um, the full walkthrough is given in here, but I should probably say something about that walkthrough that is given in this textbook um, at the end of class because um, it's overly complex, okay? So, all right, what are we doing? Well, um, there is this data set I don't really know what's in it, honestly. I, I do know that there's like, like a description here. So, okay, what's in there? So medium income, uh, house age, median house age in block groups, average number of rooms, average number of bedrooms, block group population, average number of household members, latitude and longitude, okay? Um, so, okay, this data set is readily available to us. Um, and well, we're going to perform a, a regression task on it. Now, um, looking <clears throat> through this, um, so description here, let's see, okay. The target variable is the median house value. Okay, so median house value is the target variable and the rest of it, the rest of the data, we gotta look at it and see if we can use it to regress on that value. So median house value. So um, inside my uh, notebook here, I'm just gonna remind myself, target is median house value, just for me to, to see that, okay? All right, um, now I guess I don't need to import these again, but whatever, I'll import them. And then from the sklearn.datasets module, there is this fetch California housing function. So going back, um, here, so maybe I'll go look around. Okay, so here it is. So how do you load this thing? Well, you just call it, and then you have some parameters to give it. So this looks like it's gonna return data and target if you, if you set this to be true. Um, I sort of wanna look at, it, look at it as a data frame first before getting the, the features and target values. So um, I'm gonna set as frame equal to true and then look at it. So, all right, so data is equal to fetch California housing and then as frame equals to true. And then because I've worked with um, like loading utilities with SkyKitLearn, I know that this is going to return a dictionary and the dictionary has a keyword data that is the data frame. So with that being said, I'm gonna just say, maybe I'll just do DF equals, no, no. Yeah, I'll do DF is equal to um, data and then pass in the keyword data like that. And then DF, just to look at it. Maybe DF dot, no, I want it just there, whatever. Okay, so um, we have median income, population, average bedrooms, average rooms, house age, um, I am assuming that this was the target here. Uh, let's look back at the data. So, okay, um, target average house values and units. Oh, if I do as, so I'm reading the documentation, right? And so if I do as frame is true, target is a pandas object, right? So, um, Maybe what I want to do is actually 
So each row. So that is true. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say return x underscore y because I'm just going to grab the data, right? Because I, when I did the data frame, it kind of partitioned the data in a way that I don't like. I'm just going to grab the values, okay? So uh, to do that, if you were reading the documentation, I was kind of scrolling over it too fast maybe, um, this returns a tuple. So we can unpack that tuple by saying x comma y equals to that stuff, right? So, um, so instead of that, I'll do uh, x comma y, and then change this to x underscore y. There it is. So return equals true. Is that the keyword? Looks correct. I'm not getting errors. Run that cell. It ran. So here's x. So those are like, looks like that's latitude. If you see like negatives, you'll have like latitude or whatever. Um, if I want to know the shape of this thing, uh, what is it? Type of x. Yeah. So there's the, the, the shape of it. So there are eight features and tw a little like 20,640 entries. Okay. Um, and if I look at the shape of y, matches up. So for each instance of uh, this housing data, we're going to have a label. So what does y look like? It should be real valued. Yeah, regressors. Right. So we're going to regress this, like these values, using the instances in here. Okay. Now um, we should look at, okay, earlier we imported a decision tree. We want to import a regression tree now. Right. So going back, user guide, trees. What is the syntax? I'm pretending like I don't know it right now. I actually do think I remember it. Um, so there's a classifier, classification. So maybe there's a regression here. Okay, so it looks like sklearn.tree. That makes sense. That module would have all the, the tree type algorithms. And inside that module is the decision tree regressor. So oftentimes I'll just do this. Copy that and come back over here and like paste <laughs> and then make it look the way I want it to. Go to that. And then I like, I prefer this syntax from sk learn.tree import decision tree regressor like that. And then I don't have to use the dot notation there to instantiate it. Okay. Now there should be keyword arguments associated with this function or this, this class. So coming back over here, um, I need to go to the decision tree class. I don't like the deprecation warnings there, but whatever. All right, so splitter best by default, max depth is none. Um, min samples leaf, uh, max leaf nodes. These keywords um, you will learn about when you read the section on uh, decision and regression trees in this book, which out of all of the sections to read on, that's the one that like, I really want you to, to look over. Okay, because it, it'll come in to play next time when we talk about random forests and these types of things. So, but I see, I'm just gonna set it to its default parameters and see what happens. Um, so, okay. What also might help, by the way, if you didn't see it earlier, there's an examples tab here. So, and this is an example of implementing um, that regressor. So what's going on here? So we have two regressors, one with max step two, one with max step five. You see that? And they're comparing them. 
what's happening here, right? Um, they're both fit, they predict. Um, yeah, so, okay, let's see what happens. So there's that. And then we can, do, oh, we forgot. We need to um, maybe do um, X train, X test, comma, Y train, comma, Y test equals to train test split and then pass in your X and your Y. And again, X and Y were returned by the fetch California housing data, I mean, uh, uh, function. And then we can just maybe do, and this is like a very naive way right now. We're not like pre-processing the data, we're not shuffling the data around. We're just like seeing what happens if we just look and plug in, right? So then we would do uh, CLF. Actually, I don't know why they called, I would call that reg. That's kind of the standard way to do it, reg dot fit method, x train comma uh, y train. Oh, for, yeah, for the random state. Um, uh, there are default values for that, but I'll, I'll, I can set it. So random state, uh, 12 or something, whatever. And then um, what are, so parameters. I like the VS code has this random state, correct, shuffle, train size. Um, uh, I'll just leave it as default right now. Okay, so here we go. So it looks like it's been fit. Um, so maybe what we can do now is like look at our mean squared error because it's regression. So um, go back to user guide, maybe come down here. Um, let's see, I could go above, but there's a little search thing. Um, So oh, there is a value here. There's a, I see it, so it's inside of metrics. So then I can go, okay, um, from sklearn.metrics import in mean squared error. There's also a mean squared log error. I'll, do, I'll just do that. And then maybe I'll do, okay, so um, <clears throat> why predict equals to our regressor dot predict and then throw in um, x I'll do test okay so x test to see how, how well we're doing on testing data and then um, we can just call the function right so mean squared error pass in so again, if you didn't know, why true, why predict? So we're gonna pass in, um, what is it? Why test, so that's the why true, and then why predict. And I spelled it wrong. So like, how would we know if this was bad or not, right? So now we have to start thinking about this, right? So um, maybe what we should, should do <clears throat> is something like this. So I'm going to instantiate that. Make a prediction and fit here. And then maybe so put a print statement here, F string um, MSC for fit. Oh, yeah, before fit.
y test like that, uh, y dick like that, close out that f string, maybe give myself a little bit of space, the new line character right there, and then come down here. I need to do this again, like that. And then I can just copy that, paste there after fit. Oh, and I had a, um, an, I thought that that might happen because when we instantiate this class, are there any rules that we've defined, right? Like, could we possibly fit any, like, could we like predict anything? There are no rules that are made, right? Like without training, there's not going to be any decisions to make. So maybe what we can do is something like this. Um, let's look at, say, max depth equal to like one. So I'll call this like reg one here. Copy that, come down here. Reg one dot fit x train comma y train. And then reg one dot predict there. And this would be reg one there. And then here I'll do two. And then here I'll do a two there, two there, two there. Um, and then reg two. So why did I do that? It was like, well, it was a quick and dirty way for me to see what like a baseline regressor would do, right? So like max step one, there's only one split, right? And the mean squared error was what? 0.9, right? But again, we have to remember that this is mean squared error, like the average error, right? So, okay. What, up, what about if I change max step to be like 20? Right? Or 25. Notice it's not changing, right? In fact, what happens like Okay, I'm going to copy all this here. Stick it down here. Um, these decision trees, actually, I should do this. I should have done this earlier. Random state. So. So now I can actually get a sense of how it's changing for that given tree, right? Because again, the regression trees and decision trees in Scikit-Learn are generated stochastically. So we now that we have the same random state, they're going to start and they're going to reproduce each other. So um, that's what happens when we go to like 20. And so starting from the same spot, now our mean squared error uh, was at that 0 0.53, and that's about as best as we've seen so far, right? So then maybe if we didn't know anything, right? Because we haven't really covered like measuring regressors really, right? So maybe we could go to the user guide and say, okay, realistically though, like if I wasn't just sitting in front of you, I would look at this book. <laughs> There's a lot of good examples with um, uh, measuring the performance of regressors in this book. But since I'm up here, let's look at, uh, let's see, maybe metrics and scoring, right? Just literally just like going through the thing, right? Um, and it's not that difficult because this is so well documented. So classification, regression. Ooh, what's max error? Like look at all of these things, right? So, and each one of these has a definition that should follow it. Right. So um, max error seems like that might be of interest to us. Right. Like what's how far are we what's the maximum distance from the correct value that we 
wanted to predict on, right? Um, and again, the user guide is really where the documentation <clears throat> and like the mathematics is, right? So um, mean absolute error, mean squared error, these are all different ways of, of measuring these things. So one interesting thing that you could do for like one of your repositories is to just like look at these errors and try to determine which one best suits the goal that you're, you're, you're working at, right? The regression problem that you're working on. Um, so that's, there's just so much more than we can cover in like a semester, right? And that's why actually on that note, um, we are trying to offer a second part to this course during the summer. It'll like that you could take via like, like because I do everything with Zoom, like you could be remote and still take the course. So if y'all are interested in that, actually just raise your hand if you're interested. Yeah, like a few people. All right. So yeah, it's, um, we're, we'll go into more of these like, these details about these metrics, but then also go into more deep learning and then also reinforcement learning. Um, okay, so we've done something, right? Like we've, we have a fit model. It's mean squared error is 0.53, right? We could measure these other things on it, but realistically what I would do next is I would compare this regressor to like a linear regressor, right? And then, Maybe what I could do, another thing, if I wanted to visualize something, I could try to choose three features from this data set instead of using all of them, right? There's currently eight features that are being fed in. But how would you determine the best features? Well, we haven't learned that yet. That's coming up very soon. And that's the principal component analysis. Okay. So I think what, um, uh, what, this illustrates is that it's not that hard to implement these things. And the documentation is there. And there's so many data sets on S SK Learn that you should play with, right? And make a repository on and tell a story, right? We're getting towards the end of the semester and you should really be like on making those, those Jupyter notebooks, okay? Now, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording here for just showing you how to do the decision tree regressor and kind of showing you a little bit of SK Learn's documentation, like how to like go through it, right? And find what you need. So I'm gonna stop the recording here.